We give on and praise to the true and living God on this great day day of worship we truly honor the lord jesus christ I want to welcome you this evening to wednesday night bible study what a mighty god we serve he is truly the king of kings and lord of lords he is the great i am and we worship him in spirit and in truth and if you did not know his name is jesus amen so we want to welcome you to wednesday night bible study um tonight may the 31st amen the lord is truly um allowing this year to go by fast and we thank the lord for his goodness his mercy and his grace i want to I uh, thank the, our deacons, um, Deacon Hibbler and Deacon McKenzie for doing such a great job and giving us Wednesday night Bible study, great biblical teaching. Uh, we're so blessed here at Rooted to have men of God who stand on the word of God. And so I truly want to thank our deacons for standing in the gap, give me a little bit of time to get a little bit of R&R &R so that we can come back strong. Amen. We want to talk tonight about a popular topic that's in many of our Christian homes, um, especially if you have individuals who are living in your homes who are caught between adolescent and adulthood, amen? They're no longer kids, or, uh, but they're not yet matured adults. And this is a, a topic in many homes, Christian homes, uh, they're called teenagers, amen? And one of the things that they battle with is the topic that we're going to talk about. And not just for teenagers, we're going to make sure that we expand it to, to also to all single adult Christians. Amen. It doesn't make a difference from 18 to 100. If you are single, an adult Christian, this may be a topic for you that you need to listen up. It may be an issue. But this is also a, a, a topic that many mothers and fathers need to listen up to also so that you can give proper instructions. And we're going to talk about an issue that you don't hear the church talk about that much. And, and we've entitled it, My Boyfriend and My Girlfriend Thing. We want to talk about this boyfriend-girlfriend thing that, that is, that's affected all of the homes. If you, if you live long enough, it also affects the church. And what we want to do in two settings, we want to teach from a biblical perspective, um, biblical guidelines, for biblical dating, amen? We're gonna talk about biblical guidelines for biblical dating. Now, this is an issue that's not talked about a lot within the Christian realm, within church. You don't hear too much talk about this. And what's happening is folks who are born again believers are setting up their own standard when it comes down to dating, amen? They're setting up their own standard. Uh, uh, many have fallen to the structure of this world, amen? When it comes down to dating. So what we would like to do, and I want you to really pay close attention because some of the things we're gonna talk about may shake you a little bit because it's gonna go against the culture. It's gonna go against the world's view. And what I wanna do in these next um, two settings is give you a biblical view on Christian dating, and that's something that we need to really identify, Christian dating, amen. And so we want to talk about it. I need single Christians to listen up. If you're single and you're dating or you're thinking about dating, you need to listen up, and you need to do it God's way. If you're a teenager, amen, you need to do it God's way. Mom and dad, you need to instruct your children um, to do it God's way, amen. And so that's what we want to talk about in these um, um, two weeks of period of instruction, two Wednesdays period of instruction. Let's open up. Father, we do love you. We praise you and honor you. What a mighty God we serve. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord God, for your saving grace. Oh God, how you are so merciful and how you're so kind and how you pull us out of darkness and place it into the marvelous light. We thank you, Lord God, for this great hope that you poured in our hearts that we're no longer disappointed. Lord God, we thank you for Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for Wednesday night Bible study. We thank you for the time of refreshing for the believer to get into your word. Now, Lord God, open up our hearts and minds to receive biblical truth, Lord God, that we may just not be hearers, but doers of your word, oh God. Show yourself strong with the Christians, oh God, in these latter days. In Jesus' name we pray that the church say amen, amen. My boyfriend and my girlfriend thing, amen. A popular topic that we need to put our foot on and look at it uh, from a biblical perspective. You notice in the, in the scriptures, there's no such thing. You don't see boyfriend and girlfriend in, in the Bible, amen? You don't see that. And so we want to look at it and we want to put some, um, uh, some guidelines to this thing, amen? But let's be very clear. Let's be very clear. And I want to 
first make sure we understand two things when it comes down to my boyfriend and my girlfriend thing. Amen. You may be 40 years old and you may have a boyfriend. Amen. You may be four, uh, 50 years old and you got a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Let's be very clear about two things. And the first thing we want to be clear about as we look at this, um, because many folks are unclear, amen, uh, we want to look at this. And the first thing we want to look at is this, is that parents don't think, don't think that it's unusual for your teenager to be attracted to the opposite sex. Don't, don't think it's unusual that uh, little Billy, uh, little Susie, uh, is attracted to the opposite sex. It, it comes, amen? That's the norm. That's nature. That's how God created man and woman to be attracted to the opposite sex. So stop flipping out. Stop thinking that it's something strange because now your little girl now has grown up and now she's starting to like boys or your, your, your young man has grown up and he's starting to be infatuated with girls. That's natural. And even for single adults, amen, it's, it's natural for you to have an attraction towards the opposite sex. There's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, the Bible says this, God's plan. That's why it says, uh, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and be united to his wife. Amen. And the one shall become one flesh. So we see that God's plan was always um, that a man will be attracted to a woman and a woman is attracted to a man. That's God's plan. Amen. Not make sure we clear Not two men attracted to each other and, and this type of eros love, but and not two women attracted, but a man and a woman. Amen. And so if you look at this, we need to understand that this is a human function and there needs to be some biblical lines drawn around the teenager. There needs to be some biblical lines drawn around the single adult Christian. When we come down to this, amen, they must not cross to stay within the framework of, of, of kingdom dating. And so what we want to do, we want to put some biblical guidelines, some, draw some biblical lines around this thing called Christian dating. But secondly, make sure we're very clear on this because many people are unclear. Dads and moms are unclear. Teenagers are unclear. Uh, single Christians are unclear when it comes down to dating. Let me just make sure we understand. Even pastors and ministers are unclear. Amen. And if pastors and ministers are unclear when it comes down to Christian dating, amen, and then the congregation is going to be very unclear when it comes down to Christian dating. And so the second I want, thing I want you to be uh, made aware of is this, is that, is that Christ, kingdom dating it's for mature teenagers, amen? We got, uh, you got some teenagers that are very immature and you allowing them to date. You got to be very careful with that, amen? It's for mature teenagers, amen? You may set the time when they're going to be able to go out and date. I know with my children, it was in the 11th grade, amen, before they entered into the 12th grade, but whatever it is for you, but they should be mature teenagers, amen? And single adults, I want you to get this this evening, single adult Christians, uh, that are not married, amen, are able to date. And let me sh make sure we understand this, that are not still married, amen, because what's happening is a lot of uh, 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 single adult um, Christians, maybe you're separated or maybe you're in the process of divorce or whatever, you're having marital problems, whatever it may be, um, you're, you're finding yourself going into this realm of dating. But that's a no-no. Why? Because you're still under a covenant. Amen. You're still under coming. I don't care. You're about ready to get divorced. It doesn't make a difference. You're not divorced. It doesn't make a difference because we're broke up and we're single or we're living in separate places. No, no. Uh, dating is not for married folks. Dating is for unmarried folks. So make sure we're clear with that. Amen. Make sure we're clear with that. Amen. The Bible says you have heard that it was said that you shall not commit adultery. Listen to what God says. Amen. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in her heart, uh, in his heart. Amen. So we're not just talking about the physical act of, of, of sex, but also lusting it and getting into this realm of, of thoughts. Amen. And so we have to understand that Christian dating is for singles. Amen. It's not for married folks. It's for single folks. And we got to, I got to put my foot on that because I'm seeing more folks in church who are in the transition of divorce or in the transition uh, uh, of a breakup, or whatever they may be, and they're finding themselves being attracted to other people, amen? And that's sin, 
all day and every day, amen? And so we have to understand that dating is exclusively for single people, amen? If, you, if you're a widow, you're fine, amen? If, 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 if you're single, you're fine, amen? So let's get these two things off the table. Uh, but these are the principles that I want to challenge you with. And, and these are the principles that I want you to renew your mind and thinking when it comes down to biblical Christian dating, because there is a mandate that we um, do everything according to God's will, amen? And so there needs to be some definitive biblical lines drawn around teenagers. There needs to be some definitive um, biblical lines drawn around single adults, amen? And these principles, watch this, they will challenge you and they will redefine your dating, amen? Um, a, lot of our a lot of our thinking about dating uh, a boyfriend or girlfriend, um, the concept comes from the world. The concept comes from the culture that surrounds us. The culture is shaping um, um, our thoughts about boyfriend and girlfriend, and, and, but, but God's word is not shaping our thoughts when it comes down to, to Christian dating or kingdom dating. And, and pastors, we need to talk about this a little bit more. Amen. We need to talk about this a little bit more. So as we look at this, let's understand. Let's go to the first principle. We've got a, quite a few principles we want to hit. And I want you to write this down. And I want you to, to, to ask God to open up your mind to receive truth. Amen. And, and get this truth. Because these principles will challenge you. Amen. And keep this in mind. Keep this in mind as we go into these principles. You belong to Jesus Christ. You're kingdom people, amen? And so because we're kingdom people, we should do it a kingdom way. Let me make sure I reemphasize that. If you're born again, you belong to Jesus Christ. So watch this. We should now want to do it God's way and not the world's way. Because our aim, watch this, is to please him. That's it. Even in dating. Even in dating, amen? And so as we look at this, let's, let's grab this. Let's look at a few of these points. The first principle that I want you to grab hold to and write it down Kingdom dating is a Bible thing. Kingdom dating is a Bible thing. You say, but Pastor, you just said there's no boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible. There's no word that says anything. Paul doesn't write anything about boyfriend, girlfriend, or Peter, or, or no words are written about boyfriend and girlfriends. And you, and you may be wondering, what is the biblical mandate? What is the biblical mandate uh, that kingdom dating fall under if, if, there, if, if there's never been no writings about it? If, if there's a gray area. Amen. And let me tell you right now, Bible student, theological, amen, theologically, whatever there's a gray area in scriptures, amen, and you don't see it spoke on, amen, it always falls under, it still falls under a biblical mandate. The biblical mandate for the New Testament believer is this. Whenever you don't see it written, it still falls under this. And Romans 12, Romans 12, amen, Romans 12 uh, Verses 1 and 2 says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies, watch the mandate, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, and this is your true proper worship. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing will. I want you to get that tonight. If there's a gray area, it falls under this biblical mandate, amen, that we are not to be conformed to this world, but we'll be conformed under God's will, amen. That's it, amen, so that we can present holy before the Lord, amen. That's the biblical mandate, but watch this. Also, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, so whether you eat or drink, here we go, it covers everything. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, even Christian dating, whatever you do, Whatever you do as a believer, do it all for the glory of God. So watch this. We're going to get away from this stuff. But there's nowhere in scriptures to say anything about that the mandate of Christian dating falls under biblical mandate. Yes, it does. Because all gray areas falls under this to bring honor and glory to God. Amen. I wish I had the church was filled. We get an amen. And this is an awesome mandate for the believer. I'm teaching you this evening. Amen. Teaching you this evening. So understand, there are two kingdoms. I want you to get this. There are two kingdoms that are battling uh, singles, teenagers, for your allegiance. Amen? Two kingdoms. When it comes down to Christian dating, there's a war going on. 
Amen. If you've been in church, you might be 40 or 50 years old. You done found you somebody. You're dating somebody. There's two kingdoms that are battling for your allegiance. And as we look at this, I want you to give you the first one and understand. Amen. Is that the kingdom of darkness is battling for your allegiance. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I want you to understand this evening that, that the spiritual realm, the dark spiritual realm, is trying to get you to conform when it comes down to Christian dating to its way. But God wants you because he loves you to conform to his way. And so the, the question is this, who, who are you going to fall under? What mandate are you going to fall under when it comes down to your dating? Amen. What mandate are you going to fall under? Amen. And so as we look at this, we have to understand there's a battle. We got to understand there's no separation with dating. Watch this in holiness. There is no, don't say, but that's Sunday thing, a church thing. And what I do is my thing. Watch this. There is no separation with, with, with dating and holiness. Amen. And so we have to understand that it falls under, either you're, going to, either you're going to fall under God's rule, watch this, when it comes down to your dating, amen, I know you may be 45 years old or 40 or 30, whatever, and you say you've grown, either you're going to fall under God's rule or you're going to fall under the devil's rule. You're going to fall under one, uh, one of these rules when it comes down to how you're going to date, amen. And let me tell you this, doing it God's way is the best way. And it produces some great results, amen? And so as we look at this, the kingdom of darkness wants, the kingdom of darkness love to promote the boyfriend-girlfriend thing because the kingdom of darkness will promote that it's cute and it's normal for you to have a boyfriend or girlfriend and be looking like you're married, amen? To get caught up in sexual immorality and all these other things, that's worldliness. That's not God's kingdom. That's not God's kingdom. That's the world's kingdom, amen? And so as we look at this, we have to understand, but there's another principle I want you to grab. The second principle is this, kingdom dating, kingdom dating is a good thing. It's a good thing, amen? It's a good thing. Kingdom dating is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong if you're single and you're dating, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're a teenager, your parents have allowed you, if you're still under their care to date, there's nothing wrong with that. Amen? Because as we look at this uh, and, and, and understand this, uh, it's a, it's a, it's not only is it a Bible thing, but it's a good thing. Look what it says. He who finds a wife. Amen? He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. So look at this. We see that there has to be a search. See, the first stage of marriage, pre-marriage, the first stage of the process of the preview of marriage is dating. Let me say that again. The first stage in the process of the preview of marriage is dating. It says that you got to find a good thing. There's a search going on. And that search begins, watch this, in the dating pool. Walk with me this evening. It begins in the dating pool. And so we see that it's not a bad thing. It's all right for you today. And I'm going to blow your mind in a minute uh, because we're going to talk about something that's, that's messed up so many folks when it comes down to dating. Amen. And so watch this. Let me just renew your mind with this as we understand this and, and understand this whole concept. The third principle is this. See, it's nothing wrong with dating. Amen. Because it's a good thing because it's a preview, the first stage for the preview for a marriage. But the third principle is this, kingdom dating involves being friends. See, kingdom dating, this is what the world is messing up the Christian, because kingdom dating is a friendship. It's developing a friendship. You better walk with me today. And I know many of you don't want to hear this, but it's true. Kingdom dating involves, watch this, just being friends. Just being friends. The greatest confusion is with this principle. That's where the confusion comes in. I think it is, it is because of the terminology. The terminology, my boyfriend, or the terminology, my girlfriend, mess folks up. Amen? It's the terminology. Amen? And so as we look at this, it's wrecking, the terminology is wrecking many teenagers, and it's wrecking many single Christians in the church. Amen? And so we must go back and look at this and understand what do I mean by friendship. First thing, is that dating is building a friendship. 
It's based on friendship, amen? And we have to understand that there's, I'm gonna explain two stages, two stages before marriage. There's two stages that you don't hear too many people talk about. First, there is the non-exclusive stage. Make sure you write that down. Get this understanding, amen? There's the non-exclusive stage, and then there is the exclusive stage, all right? I'm going to explain this to you, amen? It's going to rock your socks for a minute, amen? Because the world has already tainted our view of dating, and now we've, we've now grown and, and have grabbed the world's view instead of a biblical view, amen? Walk with me. And so we have to understand that dating is non-exclusive, meaning friendship. That's what it does. It builds friendship. Amen. Walk with me today. And this is the confusion. Amen. It's a non-exclusive meaning. And with this, watch this. There's no strings attached to Christian dating because it's building friendship. There's no strings attached. There's no sexual intimacy that, that, in, that is involved with this. Amen. Why? Because Christian dating is a friendship. It's a friendship. Amen. You're not no one's honey. You're not no one's baby or, 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 or my girl, my man. Amen. These words shouldn't even come out of your, your, your mouth. It should be my friend because that's what Christian dating in is about a, a friendship. It's non-exclusive. Amen. Look at this. It says in Proverbs 17, 17. I know this is new for some folks. Amen. A friend loves at all time. And a brother is born for a time of adversity. Amen. That's where you build up a friendship. You build up a pool of, of, friends, of friends and friendships, amen? And therefore, it says here in 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, therefore, encourage one another. That's what friends do. Encourage one another and build each other up just as the fact you're doing. Friendship is a way of building each other, encouraging each other, developing a bond with each other, amen? Also, look what it says in Ecclesiastes 4, 10. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. That's what friends do. Help each other up. Let's look at friendship so we don't get this thing tainted. Amen. Friendship of the opposite sex I'm talking about. I ain't talking about men and men. I'm talking about men and women friendships and women and men friendships. Amen. That can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls who has no one to help them up. What is this based on? This is based on dealing with friendships. Amen. And so dating is a non-exclusive Building up friendship, amen? Building up friendships. That's why so many marriages are struggling today. So many marriages are struggling today because they missed the first stage of dating, amen? Of building up a friendship. The foundation of many marriages should be all friendship, amen? That we build it off of a friendship before we got into, watch this, into the exclusive stage, amen? Before we transfer it from the non-exclusive into the exclusive. I'm helping somebody today, amen? And so it's about building up friendships, amen? And now, let me, let me mess you up a little bit. Dating is this, and, and I've shared this with my daughters before, and they're, they're trying to exercise this, amen? Dating is this, amen? It's not limiting yourself to one person because it's building a pool of friends, Amen. It's building a pool of friendships. So you can date it going out to eat, having a good time, because the only thing you're doing is building up friends, a friendship. And it's not exclusive. It's non-exclusive. Did you get that? Amen. And so as we look at this, the world say, well, you're dating so many people, but it's no sex involved. There's, there's no strings attached. Amen. It's a non-exclusive building up friendship. Amen. Building up friendship. And that's where the church needs to get healthy again. That's what we need to get healthy again, amen? And so as we look at this, it is non-exclusive. But then there is the exclusive stage. But watch this, the exclusive stage, amen? The exclusive stage comes, watch this, the moment you leave the non-exclusive stage is the moment your eyes now latch on to that person you've been dating or, or that pool of dating that now you see that person and now your hearts connect. Now there's a connection. Now, based off of friendship, now there's a connection that now, watch this, your hearts connect. 
and now you see that you have a lot in common and now watch this you're ready to go to the next stage amen and so from the non-exclusive you go to the exclusive stage and you both decide watch this you both decide that now I ain't no longer dating nobody amen because watch this walk with me in the non-exclusive stage in the pool of dating you build your ideology of what you are looking for in a future mate See, you can't build off of just one, but in your pool of dating, you're building up your ideology. What are you looking for in a future mate? And then one day, in that, it'll transfer to an exclusive that now I found that person. That person has found me. Now we no longer need the dating pool. Now, watch this, we're working towards something. We're working towards, here we go, we're working to an exclusive dating relationship that we have a new term for it, and it's called a pledge. Or it's called, watch this, a betrothed. Or it's called, here we go, an engagement. Now, watch this. Now I'm yours and you're, you're mine. And the moment now that I'm yours and you're, you're mine, now we're working in this transition from non-exclusive to exclusive, and now, watch this, we're in this period now that we're working towards pre-marriage. Now we're working towards building a future. Now we're working towards planning this time together with one another. Amen. And we call it an engagement period. We call it a pledge. You say, well, pastor, where you, where you get that from? Well, in the Bible, there was a betrothed. Amen. There was a pledge. There was no sex. There was no, no, your, my house is your house and my key is your key. And, and we're going, no, no. What it was is now we're in the planning stages of, of getting ready for our marriage, amen? Still no sex, still no, no intimacy at that level, but now we're getting ready. We're going to develop intimacy, uh, 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 social intimacy, intellectual intimacy in this, in this period of time. Um, we're going to develop these different int spiritual intimacy. We're going to develop plans for the future in this exclusive time. We're going to plan, um, get ready uh, to, to live like married folks in this exclusive time. And now, watch this, we're going to begin to resemble, without the sex, without you living in my house and I'm living in your house or whatever, uh, we're going to start to resemble a married, married couple. Amen? So watch this. Look what he says in Matthew. Matthew he tells us this, and he says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged. She was betrothed. She was engaged. She was in an exclusive relationship with Joseph. Amen? And we know the story. Uh, Joseph didn't have sex with her. Amen? But he still, he still uh, watch this, he still covered her. He still built into her. She still built into him as they were working their way up to the marriage. Amen? And it says, but before they came together, here we go, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. So as we look at this, we see a betrothed or a pledge or an engagement period. So what are we saying, Pastor? Let me summarize this. So dating is non-exclusive friendships, nothing but building friendships. And out of that friendship, amen, out of these friendships, amen, now you form your ideology of what you want in your future mate. And from that, your eyes latch on to that person, their eyes latch on to you, and now you go from non-exclusive to an exclusive relationship, and now you're working your way towards a premarital, just premarital covenant, amen, as you're getting ready for the marriage covenant. Did you receive that? I know it's some hard stuff. I know it's some new stuff for you. So as we look at this, it involves being friends first, amen? Get that, get that. I want you to just chew on that for a minute. Amen. Because a lot of folks go straight to dating, straight to an exclusive. Amen. That now I'm yours and yours, you're mine. Amen. And now we got all these strings attached. We got all this sex involved. We got all this other stuff involved. And we never went to the non-exclusive. We went straight from the non-exclusive. We forgot all about it. We went straight to the exclusive. Amen. And even in the exclusive, we tainted it and we didn't do what was right. Amen. So as we look at this, we have to understand that this is the process. And I know the world is, is, is telling us all these different things, but we're talking about doing it God's way. Amen. And so from there, the fourth principle, here we go, is kingdom dating is not ownership. Kingdom dating is not ownership. I want you to, I want you to get this. Amen. Uh, uh, because somebody took you to the movies. 
or because somebody uh, brought you a steak dinner, amen, that now they own you, that now you're obligated, amen. No, no, you're not obligated. Your ownership is under Jesus Christ. He owns you. No, nobody owns you, amen. And so we need to get away from that, amen. We need to get away from this thing of, of ownership. And so we have to understand that there is no ownership in this, amen. There's no ownership. There's friendship, and there, there, from there is an engagement, but there is no ownership. Look what it says in um, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who's in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Here we go. You've been brought with a price. You know who owns you? The Lord owns you. The Lord owns you, amen? And so because uh, someone pays for something or treats you to something, to a 99-cent um, double cheeseburger, amen, uh, you owe them nothing. You owe them nothing, amen? And, and they don't get no fringe benefits, amen? And so if you're a single adult, nobody, let me make sure, I'm a, uh, make sure we get this. If you're a single adult, watch this. Nobody should be paying your bills in exchange for rights. Let me say that again. Nobody should be paying your bills, your mortgage, your car payment in exchange for rights. Amen. Make sure we understand that. Amen. You pay your own bills. You're a single mom. You'd be like, you'd be like, hey, God, and you learn how to trust in God for your resources and everything that you're going to get in life. Amen. And so as we understand this, we have to understand that there is no ownership that comes with dating. There is no ownership. Please get this this evening. Amen. And so as we look at this, we must understand it. So watch this. The last principle I want to give you, and I want you to get this, and then we'll, we'll pick up again next week, because I don't want to give you too much at one time. You got enough dealing with that, that non-exclusive thing that you're probably going to rewind and listen to again, and that exclusive thing, because many have went right past the non-exclusive, and you're in an exclusive, exclusive relationship right now. Amen? So watch this. The last principle that I want to give you tonight is this, is, is 4B. Kingdom dating is exclusively, watch this, exclusively with kingdom people. Amen? Kingdom dating is with kingdom people. I want you to understand this. I know a lot of times we, we go on outside of the realm of the kingdom. And we're dating folks who are not believers, who just, they, they don't love the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't worship him. They don't honor him. They don't serve him. They want nothing to do with him. Or maybe they just go to church. I don't know. But a lot of times we want to date folks outside of God's kingdom. And that's a no-no for the child of God. That's a no-no. Look what Amos says. Don't go by what Pastor Webb say. Look what, look what the Bible says. Amen. He says in Amos 3.3, he says, do two walk together? How can two walk together unless they agree to do so? There has to be an agreement. How can two walk together unless they agree? Yeah, I like the King James. How can two walk together unless they agree? Amen. How can you date somebody that, that is still under the realm of the enemy, still under the realm of darkness, and you're in the realm of lightness? How can, you, how can the two come together? How, how can there be agreeables? How can there be future with that? Amen. And what we'll think, well, I can save them or I could do this, but God didn't ask you to save them. Amen. And so as we look at this, we have to understand, look what it says in Ezra. Look what God says to the children of Israel. Because a lot of times we think that this is a church mandate but this is God's mandate look at the people that he set apart sanctified means to be set apart if you're saved you've been set apart for God amen for his use so look what he says in Ezra chapter 9 verses 1 and 4 after these things I have been done and these things have been done the leaders came to me and said the people of Israel including the priests and the Levites have not kept themselves, even the preachers, <laughs> even the preachers, spiritual leaders, have not kept themselves separate from the neighboring people with their detestable practices. Like those of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Perizzites and the Zebusites and the Ammonites and the Moabites, Egyptians and the Amorites. Look at this, they're pagans, amen? They don't, they don't, they don't believe in God, the true and living God, that is, amen? And he says, they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons and have mingled the holy race. Here we go. They're mingling the holy race with the people around them and the leaders and officials have led the way in this unfaithfulness. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Amen. The spiritual leaders are endorsing it because they're doing the same thing themselves. Amen. Have mercy. And he says, look at, look at, and he says in verse 3, when I heard this, I tore my tunic and cloak, pulled hair from my 
um, hair from my head and beard and set down the pole. Then any, everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel gathered around me because of this unfaithfulness of the exiles. And I set their appalled until the evening sacrifice. Look at this. Because God says you don't intermingle, you don't mix. And what we're doing now in Christian, no, we're disregarding what God says. And now we want to date folks who don't even love him. Have no, have no passion towards him whatsoever. Amen. They might say Jesus' name but they're not in love with him, amen? And so as we look at this, it should be exclusively with folks who are of the kingdom, amen? You say, but that's, that's, that's a, a, a racial biasness. Yeah, a spiritual racial biasness. Yes, it is. Because God says you don't mix the holy with the unholy. I'm looking at, remember, a recount of a story as we close this section because I gave you a lot and I want you to really um, chew on this and we'll come back next week. But, but, uh, I want you to be reminded of Samson. Samson was a judge of Israel, and he wanted what he wanted. He, first of all, he was spoiled. He was a spoiled kid, amen? His, his parents, he had this thing of entitlement, amen? Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so Sir Samson's parents, he wanted his, his parents to go get him a wife, but he wanted it from the pagans to get him a wife from out of the pagans. And, and his mother and father, they gave him some advice. It says here, look in Judges, uh, his parents warned their son. Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman. And when he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. You know, he's telling his parents, go get her for me. And his father and mother replied, isn't there acceptable women among your relatives or among your, uh, uh, your own people, our people? Amen. Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. Isn't that how it is? Amen. Even though it was his parents giving them biblical advice, don't go outside of the kingdom, that he still wants to go outside the kingdom. And watch this. Isn't that how it is? Even for single adults, that we want to find ourselves not trusting God, but going outside of the kingdom. Amen. And so as we looked at these four principles tonight, we looked at the four principles that help us, amen? I want you to look at that. I want you to go back. I want you to look at it um, and, and understand that we said that real quick. We said that kingdom dating is a good thing. We said kingdom dating is a Bible thing. We also said that uh, uh, kingdom dating is about building up friendships. It's, it's first is non-exclusive, then it transfers over into an exclusive relationship where there is one-on-one, -on -one, amen? And then we say kingdom dating is not ownership. I want you to think about that, amen? And I don't know about you, but hopefully it challenges you. If you are dating, it challenges you in your dating process, amen? That now um, you want to do it God's way. And if you're a mom or dad, you want to instruct your teenagers how to do it God's way. Ain't nothing wrong with dating, but let's do it God's way, amen? As we close, it close with the scripture here. Uh, remember teenagers and single adults. Watch this, remember this. Your life belongs to the Lord. Amen. And as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Amen. Let's grow up in this teaching. Amen. We look forward. There may be one here tonight that stands in the way of eternal life. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No, no other way to the Father except by way of him. There's no way of getting to heaven except by way of Jesus, amen? And, 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 and that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. You must be forgiven of your sin, but it takes for you to repent. It takes for you to repent and to confess your sins to the almighty God, amen, and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's you tonight. Tonight you can give your life to Jesus Christ. Call upon his name and be saved and have eternal life. Amen? Have eternal life. If that's you, call the number on the screen. Let someone know that tonight I surrendered my heart to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, and I ask the Lord to forgive me and to save me in my sins and be Lord of my life. If that's you, God bless you. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Come on out. First Sunday, Communion Sunday. Got a lot of things going on. Come on out and be a part of what God is doing here at Rooted Bible Fellowship Church. Be blessed.